Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm Dr. Shahid Sarwar, Professor of Medicine and Gastroenterology at Allama Iqbal Medical College. Today, we are going to talk about how to approach, approach a patient uh, of dysphagia. So I have no financial disclosure. This particular presentation is primarily focused on undergraduate students of uh, MBBS, house officers, medical officers, and obviously general physicians who are going to encounter these patients in their general practice. Now, what basically is dysphagia? Dysphagia is difficulty in eating. And if I say more technically, it is difficulty in passing the food or liquid, whatever uh, somebody is taking orally from mouth into the stomach. So we will approach a, uh, this particular symptom through a clinical history of a 22 year old boy who is uh, 40 kg weight and he has presented with difficulty in swallowing food for the last two years. How should I approach this patient? So my approach will be as for any particular symptom, first a history, then if examination if possible, and then I will decide upon which investigations should be carried out. So what should be the first question that should I should ask this particular person? That question has to be focused on location of difficulty in swallowing. And why I'm talking about this location? Because it can be oropharyngeal or esophageal. This is how you broadly classify it the conditions which can lead to dysphagia. And this classification is based on these two phases of swallowing. One is oropharyngeal phase, the other is esophageal phase of swallowing. Oropharyngeal phase of swallowing is the one which carries the food from the oral cavity into the upper part of the esophagus. And obviously this involves muscles, uh, that includes muscles of the tongue, muscles of the pharynx, muscles of the upper esophageal sphincter. These are the muscles which, who, which have to work in a coordinated manner to carry the food bolus from the oral cavity into the upper part of the esophagus. And once it is in the upper part of the esophagus, then the food has to transit through the body of the esophagus across the lower esophageal sphincter into the stomach. And this process primarily is carried out through a peristalsis of the muscles of the esophagus through which this food is going to pass into the stomach where the further process of digestion will take place. So obviously, uh, this is a, a mechanism which involves muscles which are being controlled by the nerves. And those nerves are be basically being controlled by the brain. We have got a cortical swallowing area, and then there is a swallowing center in the brain stem. And these centers are functioning through the peripheral nerves to control those muscles to ensure that they function in such a manner that the food is smoothly passed on from the oral cavity into the pharynx and then into the esophagus and from esophagus into the stomach. So any, any disturbance with this whole mechanism, with the, this whole passage can lead to difficulty in passing food through this, which will be called as dysphagia. So we basically classify dysphagia into either oropharyngeal, where abnormality is affecting striated muscles of mouth, pharynx, and upper esophageal sphincters maybe have, are involved or esophageal dysphagia, which is caused by disorders which can affect the smooth muscles of the esophagus itself. So the, these are two different phases and our approach, clinical approach to this particular patient of dysphagia will also be based on these two phases. So, so what we have, by now we have decided that first we have to differentiate, is it oropharyngeal or esophageal? So if it is oropharyngeal, then the patient will have difficulty or inability to transfer food from mouth to the upper esophagus. This basically is a transfer defect. And if it is esophageal, then the patient will tell you that the food, he can pass the food from the mouth to the upper part of the esophagus, but it gets stuck somewhere in the retrosternal region. That will be esophageal dysphagia. So let's see if the patient has got oropharyngeal dysphagia. He cannot pass that food particle from the mouth, food from the mouth into the upper part of the esophagus. How should I evaluate this now? So there, there are going to be a number of questions which I can ask in history, which will help me in identifying the cause for this particular oropharyngeal uh, dysphagia. So these questions are difficulties in, in initiating swallowing or in passing through the through the esophagus that we have already talked about. Is this dysphagia more for solids or for liquids or for both? 
is there any feeling of food being stuck in the throat is there any history of nasal regurgitation whenever he takes something some liquid it comes out through the nose or if he starts coughing whenever he is swallowing trying to swallow his food or there is history of dysarthria difficulty in <clears throat> that that dysarthria mean is is the difficulty in swallowing or uh, or difficulty in articulation difficulty in speaking as well or there is nasal speech his speech has got nasal to it to uh, tone as well and is there any weakness of the other parts in the body so these are the questions which i need to ask uh, from the patient who has got oropharyngeal type of dysphagia and this will help me in identifying what has led to this particular problem so so because now i want to know what is the cause <clears throat> of this particular disease. so cause can be either neurological which is failure of neuromuscular system to move the food bolus down or it can be mechanical that there is something which is obstructing the passage of the food so i uh, we come back to the same questions that we have elaborated that these are the questions that we should ask anybody who has come with neuromuscular dysphagia <clears throat> neuromuscular dys dysphagia with the oral pharyngeal dysphagia so which points uh, are going to favor neuromuscular cause basically these are the points if out of this particular these particular uh, questions of the history patient tells you that he has difficulty in swallowing both liquids and solids that he is also having nasal regurgitation he starts coughing whenever he takes something orally or there is difficulty in speaking as well he has got nasal twang to his speech or there is weakness of any other part of the body that means the cause of oropharyngeal dysphagia is neuromuscular and that means the problem is either in the cortex or in the brain stem or with the peripheral nerves or with the muscles which are involved in this whole process so basically what i am doing is i am narrowing down my narrow narrowing down my diagnosis differential diagnosis list so once it is clear that it's a neuro <clears throat> neurological sort of oropharyngeal dysphagia then the uh, my area of interest is motor cortex brain stem brain nerves and neuromuscular junction and the muscles so i can easily list the conditions which can lead to obviously if we are thinking about the brain then it can be cva parkinsonism wilson's multiple sclerosis brain tumors and tabes dorsalis these are the different conditions which can lead to a uh, problem with swallowing and all i need is imaging studies either mri or ct which can help me in diagnosing these conditions if uh, uh, we are thinking about something wrong with the peripheral nerves then, then there are diseases like bulbar palsy pseudo bulbar amyotrophic lateral sclerosis poliomyelitis and obviously then peripheral neuropathy is due to diabetes botulism diphtheria so then the list of differential diagnoses is this third is neuromuscular junction we know myasthenia gravis the most common cause which can lead to this problem and then there are diseases of muscles as well which can result in patients being unable to swallow anything orally which is dystrophy muscular dystrophy myositis malignosis and then there are metabolic causes so there is a list of differential diagnoses but to reach at this i need few questions which helps me in determining that it's a neurological cause and similarly if on the same inquiry it turns out that the patient has difficulty in initiating swallowing and food gets stuck in the throat and the dysphagia is more for solids but there is no nasal regurgitation there is no coughing on swallowing there is no dysarthria and there is no history of any weakness of any other part of the body then i should think that this particular <clears throat> oropharyngeal dysphagia is due to a mechanical cause something is obstructing the passage of the food what that something can be it can be inflammatory neoplastic extensive compression or problem with the operation of sphincter and obviously then you have got list of diseases which can cause mechanical dysphagia in this particular area like a very large stung can produce this problem pharyngitis syphilis tonsillitis malignancies vabs plumber vensels then there are diseases of operation of sphincter as well so these are all mechanical causes so just to summarize how to approach dysphagia in oropharyngeal then you have to clarify is it neurological or mechanical and that's based on those seven six seven questions that we have asked in, through this patient and if there is neurological we have the target areas if it is mechanical we know what possibly can lead to this particular dysphagia this was about oropharyngeal type of dysphagia let's go back to our patient who has presented with dysphagia for 2 years he has no difficulty in swallowing 
in passing the food from mouth into the oppressor vagus, but he feels that food gets stuck in the retrosternal location. Now, this is what esophageal dysphagia is. Interestingly, it again has either mechanical causes or neurovascular causes. Either there is a problem with the muscles or nerves, a system of neuromuscular system which is controlling the passage of food, or there is something blocking the passage of the food. So what should be the next question to the person who, has, who is saying that the food is stuck behind the sternum? The next question should be, is it for solids or for liquids? Or it is more for what? So solids or liquids? If it is for solids, that means it's mechanical. More for solids. He is able to take liquids, he is able to take semi-solid things, but whenever he tries to take solid, the food gets stuck in the uh, retrosternal region. That means it's a mechanical dysphagia. Now, once you are talking about mechanical dysphagia, there should be a differential diagnosis that should sprung automatically in our mind. As you can see, either it is Schatzky's ring. This basically is a ring at the gastroesophageal junction, uh, <clears throat> which, which is responsible for uh, difficulty in passing solids across or it can be a mass <clears throat> in the esophagus, which is causing obstruction, or it can be a structure in the esophagus. The structure can be peptic, or it can be due to corrosives, it can be due to any other cause, but these are basically mechanical causes of dysphagia, which are responsible for not allowing the food to pass across. Then we know there are diverticulums, Zanka diverticulum and, and diverticulum in the distal end of the esophagus, Food is retained in these diverticulum and patient feels that the food is lying in the, in the retrosternal region. Then in old patients, you should not forget the possibility of denture having been misplaced and lodged into the esophagus and causing the difficulty in passing the food. So these are few causes which should uh, automatically come into the mind if we are talking about uh, esophageal dysphagia, which is more for solids and which looks like a mechanical dysphagia. Now, if the dysphagia is mechanical and more for solids, what should be the next question then? The next has to be intermittent or progressive. Is the dysphagia worsening with time or it is continuing for so many years and it is intermittent, sometimes the food passes and sometimes it fails to pass through? Because that will further narrow down my list of differential diagnosis with this sort of short ring dysphagia is intermittent. Sometimes the food will pass through and sometimes the food will get stuck and it may be for many years. But when we talk about malignancy or we talk about peptic structures, these are progressive. These tend to progress with the time. So patient initially may be able to take some semi-solid things as well, but with the passage of time, he's just left with liquids only being passed through this particular area. So if it is progressive, you are going to think about progressive possibilities, progressive diseases like peptic structure and malignancy. Right. If it is esophageal and it's more for solid and it's progressive, then what we are thinking now, uh, what else can help in us and making diagnosis? Another question is odinophagia. Is the, is the swelling painful or not? If the patient feels pain in the sternum while the food is passing across, because obviously out of these conditions, the peptic structures are painful because there are ulcers as well. Corsive structures are painful because there are eroians and ulcerations in the whole of the esophagus causing pain as well. <clears throat> so in summary, when you are talking about esophageal dysphagia, only two, three questions will clarify your diagnosis. Is it more for solids or liquids? Then it is progressive or intermittent. And is there any pain associated with it or not? Now let's suppose this patient has got dysphagia, which is esophageal, but it is for both solids and liquids, rather more for liquids. It's a different situation now. And it's intermittent and there is no odinophagia. The answer to our three questions is like this. Here we are talking about neuromuscular causes of esophageal dysphagia. So here the, the problem is more with the liquids, maybe solid, may be able to pass because of the effect of the gravity, but patient has difficulty in taking liquids and, and juices and starts uh, having the feeling of dysphagia with that. What can be the possible reasons for esophageal causes? It can be, uh, it can be ecclesia, very typical. The distal end of the esophagus is closed and whole of the esophagus, there is no motility and <clears throat> at all. It can be diffuse esophageal spasm or nutcracker esophagus. 
or it can be scleroderma or systemic sclerosis in which the esophagus fails to move and it become in the lower esophageal sphincter become incompetent and there is no motility in the esophagus resulting in difficulty in swallowing the food properly through the esophagus so neuromuscular if there is pain uh, in, in the neuromuscular patients can have pain if there is pain you will think of diffuse esophageal spasms not recur and you know surface erosive esophagitis in the case so that's how you go across and remember if somebody has chest pain you will never forget the possibilities of ischemic heart disease especially if the age is also something which creates this particular doubt you will always rule out this possibility in these patients so if i put all this discussion that we have done in last 10 15 minutes whenever you face see a patient of diff, who has difficulty in swallowing first first determine either this difficulty is oropharyngeal or esophageal if it is oropharyngeal then your next question should be focused on to differentiate between neuromuscular or mechanical that we talked about is there any history of nasal regurgitation or puffing or dysarthria or all these things will favor neuromuscular if it is more for solids and if the food gets stuck in the in the posterior in the in the pharynx it's more of mechanical then you have a list of differential diagnosis for both these situations if dysphagia is esophageal again the same thing is it mechanical or neuromuscular that primarily will be determined through the question that is it for solids or for liquids or for both and if you have mechanical cause there the further question should be focused on intermittent or progressive and painful swallowing or not and the diagnosis of peptic strictures malignancies and sharsky's range and all these will be there and if it is more for liquids and it is uh, then you are going to think about the uh, motility disorders of the esophagus like eclesia and not cracker esophagus and diffuse esophageal spasms now briefly about the tests we will talk about these tests in some other session which tests available if i'm thinking of a disease which is confined to the esophagus one is endoscopy all the possible mechanical causes are easily determined malignancy strictures sharsky's range they can be seen on endoscopy another is the barium study barium study uh, to especially if you are thinking about the motility disorders but remember barium is one test which is basically a dynamic study <clears throat> it's it should not be interpreted on on the image on the x-ray film rather it has to be seen while the patient is swallowing the barium and you can see this is how you see under the fluoroscope once the barium is being swallowed you can easily see if there is any if there is any any motility disorder or not if there is any obstruction or not these things can be easily seen on that you see here we can see that there is a diverticulum in the uh, esophagus where the barium is retaining during the process of swallowing which may lead to the feeling of dysphagia for the patient <clears throat> then we have manometry high resolution manometry this basically is a pressure measurement study which is responsible for measuring uh, pressures at upper esophageal sphincter in the whole of the body of the esophagus and the distal esophageal sphincter and the diseases like eclesia and diffuse esophageal spasm and all these they are diagnosed basically on these motility studies we also have ph monitoring system and now we have wireless ph monitoring system which basically are responsible for measuring the changes of ph at the distal end of the esophagus and you can understand these are primarily used where we are suspecting gastroesophageal reflux disease so these are the few uh, uh, diagnostic modalities which are available to diagnose these conditions and we will see these diagnostic modalities when we will talk about the diseases in detail so in some we we can say dysphagia is basically difficulty in swallowing and it can be oropharyngeal or esophageal and both can be neurological or mechanical and this particular patient always needs a careful and systematic clinical history to make the diagnosis and if we approach these patients in a systematic manner during clinical evaluation we can judiciously use our diagnostic tools like endoscopy barium study and esophageal manometry Thank you very much. I hope this particular session would have helped you in in uh, understanding how to approach and how to make a diagnosis in somebody who is coming to you with the diagnosis uh, with the uh, presenting complaint of difficulties uh, eating or. Sleep.